me? If you can hear me, make something with you. Okay, great. Yeah. Hello. I'm Brett. I'm the uh, acting VP of sales over in Odoo, San Francisco. So I oversee the different sales departments there, direct sales, channel, customer success, things like that. Um, and so I am not from a technical background. I'm not a developer. I'm not on the product team. But I would describe myself as a power user of Odoo spreadsheets because if you have all these different teams, you're going to get yourself in a situation where you're going to need a lot of spreadsheets and dashboard information when you're monitoring the performance of different teams and different sub-teams, as well as the marketing information that's related to that and things like that. So uh, I don't know everything about it, but uh, I can safely say I really love Odoo spreadsheets. I'm a huge fan of it, and I've gotten to play around with it a lot. So uh, just like all these talks, if you have questions along the way, please use the pad, OXP-NU-Sheets. I'll warn you right now. Real technical questions on the back end, I probably won't be able to answer, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, if I can't answer it, of course, at the end, I'll, I'll uh, do what I can to try to get the right answer after the talk for you. But let's get right into it. So for a lot of you, this is new. This is a new concept. You've never heard of this before. You haven't used Odoo spreadsheets. What's the purpose of it? Why do we have it? Uh, you know, it's a fancy ERP software. What's the point of having so many spreadsheets? Odoo spreadsheets are very special because they have a lot of special use cases that really go beyond the basic reporting and go beyond the basic analysis and, and data visualization that we have. The classic examples, anytime that you really want to use formulas and calculations with your data, which is quite often, you know, you want to uh, multiply something to, you know, see what it's going to be based off of uh, some margin that you are anticipating, for example. Uh, or if you just really want to see, you know, uh, the averages of things, or if you want to combine a bunch of things and then uh, you know, compare that to another set of data. Formulas and calculations, really good for commission tracking, I can safely say. If you ever are paying your employees uh, a certain rate based off of a coefficient, for example. Um, tracking data versus KPIs and goals. We've really found that this is the best way to do this in Odoo in general. Uh, if you are setting particular goals and, uh, you know, KPIs for people, whether they're service workers or whether they're salespeople, Honestly, it is really good to use a spreadsheet to take the data and then compare it to a column that represents your goals, essentially. Looking at trends, so you take the data, but then you extrapolate and forecast and see where is it going, what's the trend line. Uh, and then, really important, because it capitalizes on the integration that Odoo brings you between all the different apps, it's comparing multiple data sets. So, so taking information from your products and comparing it to information from purchasing, uh, asset tracking, things like that. That's where a lot of the real power comes from. And like I said, the integration is really huge. That's always going to be number one for us and what we really care about. And so to give you an idea of the scope of what spreadsheets can bring to you, some of the examples of how people use it and how it is interacting with the Odoo data. Uh, accounting, a big one, because we have tons of built-in reporting and accounting, and it's amazing you know, what you can do just for, within the accounting platform out of the box. But it's normal to want to do some special kind of budget tracking. Maybe it's a specific area of your business, specific types of accounts. A lot of times, it really is good to set up that budget in Odoo spreadsheets. And it's kind of like KPI tracking, essentially. You, you, you're monitoring the real data in real time, but you're setting it to some sort of allocated budget goals. Uh, project, it's very similar. There's a lot of use cases for it. Many of the customers that we bring in are used to living in a world of spreadsheets, and they've gotten very familiar with tracking all of their project costs and everything on a, you know, 30 column spreadsheet or something like that. And a lot of times the best way to get them the reporting they want is through uh, spreadsheets. And it goes on and on. Inventory, it's really good for maybe specialized types of forecasting that go beyond our, our default uh, uh, way of how we handle that. Uh, sales is a big one, as I mentioned before, commission tracking. Our go-to recommendation whenever you want to calculate commissions for people is generally use a spreadsheet, take the sales data, and then you know, use multipliers and coefficients to uh, calculate that for you. But it could also be any app, and, and even apps that you haven't maybe considered using uh, that much in the past, but now that we have all apps included, you might consider adding. Attendance, if you're having your employees punch in and punch out, uh, chances are you're going to need to report on that and maybe, again, compare it to KPIs or just kind of keep an eye on trends, who has the most sick time, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, and then manufacturing, it could be very specific ways that you want to report on your work center uh, productivity, for example. It goes on and on. Basically, any app, anywhere where you have data, any models in Odoo, you can feed that into uh, spreadsheets, and it's amazing. So I asked the R&D team, what were the main priorities this year uh, for Odoo spreadsheets? What were the goals? 
And overall, to sum it up, it's a lot of little quality of life improvements. It's a lot of listening to the people and listening to what people want. And one way it was described is we want to get the basic usability in the interface up to the level that you're used to with, say, Google Sheets. Because we're still pretty new. Odoo Spreadsheets has been, uh, this is the third iteration. And obviously, there's some catching up when it comes to the little day-to-day uh, -day tasks, the little editing and things like that. And so we want to get to that level really quickly. So that's a lot of the, the goals. But of course, if you haven't already seen it, the new dashboards was a huge, huge, huge game changer that is really directly tied to the spreadsheet functionality. And if you haven't already seen them, there were already two really good talks about the dashboard feature uh, at OXB. So if you want to go deeper on that, you should really see them. I will touch on it briefly, but I'm going to focus on more of the other stuff that we did around that. And so when we say quality of life improvements, a lot of it is best illustrated with before and after. And so if you look at what we had in Odoo 15, for example, when you first create a spreadsheet, you take a data set either from a pivot table or a list view, you know, some data, and you want to send it to a spreadsheet. What it looked like before is this little pop-up, you know, pretty basic. You either get to choose an existing one through a drop-down or you make a new one. Now in Odoo 16, we have this amazing way of choosing what you want to do. It gives you a preview. It looks very familiar, maybe, you know, something that you might see in the G Suite. But you get to kind of filter through and you can have much better searching capabilities and you can choose whether you're adding it to a spreadsheet or you're adding it to a dashboard. So immediately it's, it's one of those things where once you start using it, you're like, oh, of course, of course this is how it works. This is great. But the before and after is, is a good way to look at it. And another example of before and after. Before, we were a little bit limited in our scope in terms of formatting for text colors. Some people, they don't care that much about that. Other people, uh, maybe it's the OCD tendencies, um, but I am one of them. I really care about the formatting and things like that. So this is what we had before with the colors, and this is what we have now. And this is an interesting situation where I actually think we've improved upon the way that Google does it. So if you compare this to Google Sheets, if you want to do a custom color, it actually does another pop-up that replaces this. We keep it all in one screen, so if you're choosing a custom color, you can kind of see what are the standards, how does it compare. Little usability improvements, and I'm, I'm impressed that, that, that they considered that. So, so yeah, that's, I hope that gives you an idea, but let's illustrate it better with a live demo. So I'm going to kind of get into it. Give me a second. All right, demo database. Wonderful. And I usually try to zoom in quite a bit. OK, so the way that spreadsheets works, basically you have to take data, and then you have to feed it into a spreadsheet. Um, a good way to uh, illustrate it, I think, is the invoice analysis report. So I'm going to grab that. Okay, so by default, it's showing this to me in the default standard uh, graphical view that comes with invoice analysis. And it's good, you know, if you're not familiar with it, you can choose to have, view it in different ways. This is doing a bar chart, you could do it in pie chart. And that's great, but most of our users want more and they want to get into the details. Generally, the pivot table is a really good way of doing that. And pivot tables, if you're unfamiliar with it, I like to think of it as you've got an x-axis and then you've got a y-axis and then you kind of set it up to show you whatever you want. Um, what I would do in this example, I'm going to go ahead and say salesperson as my x-axis. So in this company, we have two salespeople and then one salesperson that doesn't have a name. And then I'm going to set the y-axis to be over, I'm going to say product category. Oh, that's not very specific. So I'll go even deeper. Let's go with product. OK, it gives us a little bit of information. Now, with measures, you get to choose what are we actually looking at. This is the total amount. Um, if I wanted to, I could also say, what is the quantity? What are the amounts? So I apologize if this is very basic to you, but a lot of people are still not that familiar with pivot tables when I talk to them. So anyway, so we have a pivot table. And this is showing us something that we like. You could save it as a favorite. And maybe that's all you need. But chances are you're going to want to take this data, and maybe we're going to base our commission off of this information. So for the sake of this, I'm going to remove the counts. I'm only going to care about the invoices where the salesperson is actually set. In other words, that undefined, I'm not going to pay commission to an undefined person. Why would I do that? That's crazy. So I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to go ahead and send it over uh, to a spreadsheet. Oh, I noticed something. Actually, when I made that change, it actually uh, reverted it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it to product bin. OK, thank god. you got to catch that. OK, so I sent it over to a spreadsheet. And it gives us a very basic view that shows us that uh, by product, we have uh, uh, salesperson over here making this much and salesperson over here making uh, not very much. So I'm going to go ahead and set a KPI on this side. 
immediately. Uh, goal, let's say, a goal, a target. And I'm going to go ahead and say that, uh, you know, uh, 30,000 is the aim for tables. That's how they're set. And then in this particular case for the desks, we're going to say 25,000, something like that. OK, so there's the goal. And then I'm going to say achievement. And I'm going to say that this is a little formula, that this person did uh, this versus this. Amazing achievement and percentage. So while we're here, let's talk about some new improvements. So you already saw the data insertion model was pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the fact that we've finally added something that people have wanted for a very long time, which is the ability to actually uh, work with <laughs> I'm sorry. I think this particular demo data is still on a, uh, on a different version. Let me jump over to this other one over here. There we go. We have added the ability to actually work with uh, currencies. Um, so d various currencies over here. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. They, uh, the way it works is that a lot of times when we uh, launch a new version, the demo database that we typically work with is still a day behind. So you don't want to see what's in going on in Odoo 15, I don't think. Give me just a second. I'm going to pull up Odoo Invoice Analysis. And let's see how quickly we can build this thing up again. I'm going to choose the salesperson up at the top. All right. Salesperson. And I'm going to choose the products down below. Hopefully, you are seeing how beautiful this looks in Odoo 16. This is a perfect before and after example. Let's pretend that was intentional. And I'm going to go ahead and insert this into the spreadsheet. Ah, this looks better. Now everything is right in the world. I'm going to make a new spreadsheet. I'm going to actually give it a name, Invoice Analysis by, an, uh, by Salesperson, and throw it in there. Here we go. Ah, wonderful. OK, there we go. I knew something was wrong. We were on Odoo 15 when we should be on 16. OK, so let's go ahead and set a, some KPIs over here. I'm just going to go ahead real quick, say 20,000. I'm going to go ahead and extend that for the whole thing down below. And then I'm going to say Achievement. All right. And it's going to say, this is the total, divided by this, for example. And I think you get the idea that you can set the percentages here. What I wanted to show you, though, is that what we have added that we did not have before is the ability to actually work with currencies. So before, this was not an option. In Odoo 15, we hadn't gotten to the idea, because it can get complicated, because there's a lot of different options. But we added you know, your basic currency, which uses the currency of your company. Or you can do a custom currency. And for custom currency, you have a lot of different options. Uh, as you can see here. So if I wanted to, I could say the euro. And then within that, you get to choose the format. And this is another case where we actually, in my opinion, have better options compared to uh, Google Sheets or G Sheets. I think it's a better way of doing it. So here we go. And as you can see right there. Now, I just want to be really clear. This is not the same as doing a currency conversion, uh, because the currency conversion is still handled with our currency engine. But if you're adding numbers like targets in here, you might need to be very specific about that. And so you might need to be specific. What are you actually comparing it to? So yeah, currency, good new feature. So then when you have this information, uh, if you want to, you can use conditional formatting. And you can say things like, here, let me just extend that. You can do really good options with conditional formatting to say that if it is greater than a certain amount, it's going to be green. If it's less than a certain amount, it's going to be yellow. We have really good color scale options um, in terms of that. You might set the, uh, min, uh, the min point uh, the values that you're working with. And then you might choose what it's going to be. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm going to move past the features that we already had and try to focus on the stuff that is actually new. I think that is a good way to do it. So the next thing that I want to talk about for that that's, uh, that we've added in this new version is new chart types. And so we found this necessary in order to build our dashboard model uh, and improve our dashboard functionality that we have. Uh, because a lot of what people really want out of a dashboard these days is uh, not just a pie chart, not just a bar graph, things like that, but actually the ability to view your data uh, as, say, a scorecard or an actual gauge. And the gauge uh, model doesn't necessarily work with the data that I just tracked right there, but the point of the uh, gauge model is that if you want to see how good are you or how strong are you at achieving your goal right there, uh, and that's pretty straightforward. And the design elements, for now, you get three tiers, but that's the same thing as, as when you're doing the same thing in Google. So it's, uh, it, it's effective, especially when you're just seeing bad, medium, good in terms of that kind of performance. OK, so we've got that option right there. That is brand new. Another option that, is, uh, that you, I think you already saw was the, uh, a scorecard type. 
And I think what I would want to show you right now is something that I created here, because a lot of times, um, I think when people get into the dashboards, what I've seen just over the last few days of talking to people, they're focusing on the custom dashboards that we have, or the, the dashboards that we have out of the box for these different apps right here, which are okay. And they're really good at showing you within a specific model, what are you trying to see? But I want people to understand that a lot of the real value of Odoo spreadsheets and Odoo dashboards capabilities is that you can take data from different sets. So what I created right here is a new dashboard and this is for a business where, let's say that you're very focused on field service. You have vehicles that go out into the field, they're driving around, you're doing jobs and things like that. And you have to make decisions that come from different models. So what we have right here on this dashboard that I built is we have a quantity of vehicles available. This comes from the fleet model. So from the Odoo fleet model, it's telling me in real time how many vehicles we have. And then over here, uh, we actually have how many t uh, jobs we have in today's field service. And these are clickable, so if you click on it, it takes you directly to the field service model right there. Then down here, we're using an app called Odoo Repairs. And so with Odoo Repairs, you can actually see uh, how many repair jobs you have currently. And I applied a filter, which is an amazing new filter that we've added. You can do a filter on a specific column, which is fantastic. And uh, then down below, I also just said, what are the top products that we actually want to be focused on? These are the uh, highest cost products because we set a specific filter right there. So basically with Odoo dashboards and Odoo spreadsheet capabilities, you can have a single dashboard that takes in information from four completely separate apps and compares it side by side because that's what works for me. And this might be, as a user, the only thing that I pay attention to. I come in and I see how many vehicles do we have available today, what are the jobs, uh, what are the repair orders specific to those jobs, and then what are the products. It's extremely powerful and this is the kind of thing that you can build in five minutes, you know, 10 minutes of working with it. So it's pretty fantastic. There's a couple more features, but they're actually related to uh, slides. So I'm going to show you uh, something that it, we've just added recently that I think would be good for the community for once, because a lot of times these features are only for enterprise. Uh, you might have seen, but the library related to this has now been open sourced. I'm just going to assume that applause is for, for this. Um, but yeah, but that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean that Odoo Spreadsheets is now on Odoo Community. That's not what it is. Instead, the library is open sourced, and the reason why that was done is because it enables dashboards to be used in community. That's my understanding. So dashboards is there. And with this library, though, that's a lot of power. If you know how to make, uh, make use of it, if you know what to do with it, it's, it's very powerful. And so we're happy to, to contribute that to the community at this point. Um, so basically, improved data source insertion model, that's when you first create the, the spreadsheet, that's a big upgrade. The numeric currency formatting, which we didn't have before, very important. Upgraded color picker. The ability uh, to work with your charts, you got your gauge type, you got your scorecard, you can copy those things. The fact that we've open sourced the library. Cell wrapping, I didn't show it, but I think you know what that means. It's uh, if you have too much text, instead of just overfilling, you can you know, uh, work with that. Um, pivot control, you have a lot more in control now over changing the name of the pivots before you were just kind of set with whatever they gave you. Um, but you can also go and edit the domain, meaning the filters that you're working with that built that t pivot uh, after the fact. Before, you always had to uh, basically start over with a new pivot uh, if you decided, oh, I want to add another country that I didn't have the first time I made it. So you can have a very easy way of modifying the domain, which is fantastic. Um, the data range of filters, which I briefly touched on, which uh, we didn't have before, but for any sort of row or column, you can add a filter. Um, something that uh, you'll just have to take my word for, now you can actually import a, uh, an Excel file directly into Odoo as a spreadsheet, and it'll bring in the formulas with it, which is really important. So there are use cases where instead of starting from scratch in Odoo, you would start from a spreadsheet that you already have, bring it in, and then you can start to send data from Odoo into it, and that is actually pretty amazing. And of course, the new dashboards, which you've seen right there. So my final thoughts, I just wanted to share how I've been using it internally uh, for the last year. There's a few different ways that I've been using it, but for various sub-teams, I find that the best way to analyze the lead count that we have uh, over time and see where we st stand in terms of leads is to analyze, uh, is to build a spreadsheet where I'm taking different sets of pivot tables with very specific filters and then I'm comparing them to the headcount of employees. That's not a default report that we have, but it's pretty specific to the way we operate and specific to what we have. So basically, from here, I'm tracking what is the overall count of employees per month, and then I'm seeing what are the overall number of leads, and then dividing that to see how many leads per person are there. 
And then I'm tracking other types of leads too, more specifically, because not all leads are equal, uh, at least the way that we're doing it. So I'm taking some that come from scheduled appointments, taking some that uh, have professional emails or not. These are all from pivot tables with very specific filters applied and things like that. And then I'm also extrapolating to see, okay, compared to where we're at in the month, where are we going to end up at the end of the month? And for that, I'm using a formula where it's just saying, what is the current day of the month and seeing like that. And then you can view that in a chart. So that's how I've been doing it in Odoo 15 for this whole year. But as soon as we internally migrate to Odoo 16, which typically happens a month or so after the release, I cannot wait to start actually using dashboards for everything and actually taking the spreadsheet functionality that we have now and making this, instead of this kind of a view, something very beautiful like a spreadsheet with a, you know, with a gauge and a chart. I'm extremely excited about it. And I hope that all of you, if you're not already using Odoo spreadsheets or considering it, it's seriously something that can bring a huge amount of value to what you're doing. And I believe that is all we have. Let's go to the questions. All right. Thank you for your presentation. Sir. Sure. We have uh, some questions here on the pad. OK. Um, the first one is, is it true um, that the new dashboard app is built on Odoo Spreadsheet? So anything can, um, you can do in Spreadsheet, you can uh, see it on the dashboard. Yeah, I love that question. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the, yeah, the question was, yeah, is, uh, is it true that anything that you see in the dashboards uh, can be built in spreadsheets, right? Exactly. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, all of the dashboards are built with spreadsheets. So I should say that if you haven't already seen it, if you go to our standard dashboards that you get when you first uh, install the, uh, the Odoo app, uh, you can go into configuration settings and say that you want to go to a particular section. You have access to the spreadsheet that basically built that dashboard. And you can go into edit and completely change it from here. And you're using spreadsheet tools and you're building it out of here. And it's a really good way to learn the tool, too, because if you click on it, you start to see, oh, OK, so this came from a specific pivot table. OK. And this chart, uh, you know, how was this configured? So you can maybe click on this and then edit it. And so my strong recommendation for anybody immersing themselves in Odoo 16, start with the dashboards that we have. Don't mess with them too much initially, but explore them and see how they're configured. And I think that's a much faster way to learn it than you know, trying to read documents or watch videos. Play around with it. Thank you. Sure. Uh, someone asked uh, just on this. So how can you combine invoices and costs in the same sheets? Is it possible? Yeah, invoices and costs. Um, I would take the invoice analysis, or I would take a list of invoices, for example, send it to a sheet as a pivot table. And then you could take costs. And costs could be defined in different ways. I mean, are, are you talking about expenses? Are you talking about bills? Are you talking about maybe just specific from a specific account in your chart of accounts general ledger? But either way, that's a data list. And you can either take it as a list view or you can take it as a pivot table view with filters and domains applied. And you could send it to the same spreadsheet. And once, you, once that data lives in that spreadsheet, basically, uh, for example, I'm going to go into the documents. That's where the spreadsheets live. And I'm going to uh, open some spreadsheet. Once the pivot table exists within this spreadsheet, you can do anything you want with it. So you can uh, bring it to another tab. Uh, or you can uh, say that you want to uh, yeah, reinsert right here. So I'm taking the same pivot table and I'm duplicating it. But you could take as many different pivot tables as you want and bring them in over here. And then once you actually have it, you can mess around with it further and actually monkey with the domain and change the filters that you're using and things like that. So, so yeah, long story short, you can bring in invoices. You can bring in costs. You can view them side by side. Um, it's, that's kind of the idea. Great, yeah. thanks. Uh, we have another question about the speed. So has the spreadsheet performance been improved? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's, uh, again, I, I'm not, on, uh, I'm not uh, going to be able to provide a technical answer. But because the speed uh, of the overall Odoo system basically extends to the entire functionality of the platform, and any click that you make, any uh, query that you run, any uh, action that you perform, the spreadsheets are being fed directly by that in real time. That's where the data is coming from. So I can safely say it is extremely fast. Thank you. We have another question. Uh, in Odoo 15, uh, the format was lost when uh, exporting to Excel. Is there any improvement for this in Odoo 16? Ah, OK. So it, in other words, if you download it to an Excel format, I believe we have actually improved that quite a bit. I could be wrong, but I think that uh, we now actually have this is a new computer, by the way, so <laughs> I think this is the first time I've opened Excel. 
Um, I believe that this is a very sad little, little window. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Wonderful. Hey. <laughs> yes, so as far as format goes, I don't know if it preserved the exact uh, spacing, but it should have uh, carried over the, the formulas. I would say that's a good follow-up question to get into. Let's play around with it. Yeah. Yeah. But you can come see me, and then I can try to find the right person to uh, to answer that question for you. Yeah. Thank you. So the last one: Is it possible to share the dashboards uh, on internal uh, monitor? So maybe public uh, only the public view or something like this with you? Yeah. I mean, with a minor customization, you could put it on the online portal. I mean, you could put it on the website, and then that would be a public way to do it. My recommendation would be the standard out of the box way: is you set it up at, under some user, and then you you know, uh, have that user kind of a, a displayed just purely to show that dashboard. That's what we do in our office over uh, in San Francisco. We have a big TV that's got a computer connected to it, and it's just showing a dashboard at all times, and it's password protected, so we don't let people monkey around with it. So, Thank yeah. you. We have other questions, but we don't have time, unfortunately. Thank you for your presentation. And, um, sure. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.